Hello everyone, it's Tim from Full Spectrum Laser. Today, I'm going to walk you through my process for going from Adobe Illustrator to RE3. So first things first, we need to go to our file dropdown and open a new project. First thing you want to look at is the document size section and the unit section. If you want to change your document's units, you can do that over here. Now for the document size, personally, I like to have it match my bed size. So if you're running a Pro 48, you can change your document size to 48 by 36. But for this one, we'll stick with 20 by 12, which is the size of our Muse CO2 desktop lasers. Now if you use the wrong units, or you're opening an existing file and you want to change them, you can do that by going to Edit, Preferences, then Finding the Units tab. But inches should work for us here. So for this project, I'm going to design an edge-lit acrylic lamp. It's a simple project, and it uses a raster image that will engrave, as well as a vector cut. So let's grab an image for our lamp. I've already got one in mind. We're going to do something recognizable. The Atari logo. Now the first thing I like to do is vectorize the image. Since it's going to be engraved, we don't really have to. We could leave it as a raster image, but vectorizing it will let us do a couple things. It'll let us scale it without it getting pixelated, and we'll be able to change the color. So we need to do an image trace. If you don't have image trace on your toolbar, you can go up to Window and find it in the dropdown. In our image trace window, we're going to change the mode from black and white to color. Now we're going to make the image black and white anyway, but it's a pretty bright red, so I'm not sure if Image Trace will make the logo black or white. So we'll just do it manually after we've vectorized it. Now the image was pretty big, so the Image Trace might take a minute. But after it's done, we have one more thing to do, and that's go up to Object and Expand. This basically just converts it to curves. Now we can see every shape has an outline, but we can also see this weird bounding box. It's not a big issue, it's just the white portion of the original image. We can grab our direct selection tool, which is the white cursor, click it, and delete it. You don't have to with the project we're doing, but it'll make changing the color a little bit easier. If we had used the ignore white feature in the image trace tool, we could have skipped that step, as it'll vectorize everything except white pixels. Now we can change our color. We'll do black, since that's what RE3 will engrave. You can see that I missed the little interior spots of the A's. But again, we'll just grab our direct select tool and delete them. Next up, we'll add our vector outline. Now the LED bases I have have a specific size they need to be to fit. But since I've already made some, we'll just grab the base dimensions from a previous file. So you can see I've got a few different designs here, but we just need the rectangle at the bottom. The rest we're going to make ourselves. So I'll grab the rectangle tool and trace it corner to corner. Next we'll drag it over and line up our Atari logo. Then we'll grab the pen tool and start the outline. Since the logo is symmetrical, we're going to outline one side, then just mirror it. Also, these green lines that keep popping up are called smart guides, and you can activate them by going up to view. Sometimes they make tracing small details annoying, so I'll turn them off. But here, they're going to help us find the center of the rectangle, so we can make our outline symmetrical. So once we find the center, we'll use our pen tool and click once for every point we want to make. Now we have this slope on the side. We're going to click and hold to try and match that curve. But I think we need to start the curve from the top, so we'll hit Ctrl Z and click and drag from the top. You can also hold shift to make sure your curve trajectory is straight up and down. Now we've got this pretty close. So if we just click to the next point, the curve would continue. But we want the curve to go straight into a sharp angle. So we can press P, which is the shortcut for the pen tool, and that will cancel the curve. Now we just click where we left off and finish our shape. So we only have half of our outline, so we need to copy and paste the second one. 
we'll control C and control V to copy and paste. Then we'll need to reflect it, so we'll go up to Object, Transform, and choose Reflect. This next bit can be kind of confusing. We want to reflect it horizontally, so we'll have to reflect it over the vertical axis. The little icon will help make sure you're reflecting it the right way. Next, we want to grab our reflection by this little anchor and drag it until it snaps to the opposite anchor. The snapping is part of the Smart Guides feature, so if it's not snapping, make sure you have Smart Guides on. Now we have two halves, but we want it all to be one shape, so we'll be using another very useful tool in our toolbar called Pathfinder. Again, if you don't have Pathfinder in your toolbar, just go up to Window and find it in the dropdown. Pathfinder is where you'll find the Union tool, but in Illustrator it's called the Unite tool. So we'll shift click to select both halves of our outline, then we'll unite them so they're one shape. Next, we need to do the same with the base, so shift click again and unite. Now we're all set. I like to change the color of my vector cuts. It helps differentiate what's being cut and what's being engraved. Also, I'll show you a trick when we import into RE3 that requires your vector lines being a different color. I'm actually going to show you three different ways to import files into RE3. There really is no right way or a wrong way to do it, but it'll show you some advantages and disadvantages of each method. First, I'm going to save two separate files, one for the cut and one for the engraving. This is pretty straightforward. We'll select our outline and delete it, and then save just our logo. We're going to save as a PDF because RE3 works really well with PDFs. After that, we'll hit Ctrl Z and do the same for the outlines. We'll delete the logo and save just our cut line. So to import our files, we'll need to open RE3. I'm going to use our demo software on our website. Typically you'll access your software by typing in the IP address on your laser's touchscreen. But say your laser is off and you still want to design an RE3, the demo software is perfect for that. You can even export a save file that you can later open in your actual software. So here's our workspace. We have it set to the Muse Core, but you can select any machine that you have. We'll leave it with the 20 by 12 workspace, and we'll just import both PDFs. Be sure that we're matching the check mark to our file. So this is the raster file, so we only want to import the raster data. So we'll leave raster checked. Now we'll do the same for the vector file. Down here where it says remember my selection, I don't really recommend checking that because I like to be able to choose file to file what I want to do. Now both of our files are in here and all we have to do is line them up. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little more to the left. Perfect. Next we can set our power settings. For engraving I like to do a low power, maybe 30, but we'll keep the speed at 100. For our cut, we'll want to do the opposite. We'll want a lower speed while keeping the power at 100. I think maybe 45 might work. Actually, let's consult the Material Select menu. For an acrylic lamp like this, I'd likely use 8th inch acrylic, so we'll choose that. Okay, it says 30, so we'll go with the recommendation. Keep in mind these material settings are just to get you in the ballpark. Your material might be slightly different and need slightly different settings. This is especially true of wood. So with that, we're ready to go. If we were connected to a machine, we could run our perimeter and start our job. But for now, we're actually going to go back into Illustrator and I'll show you a couple different ways we can import just a single file. So first, we're going to rasterize our logo. This will ensure that the laser won't try to cut out our logo. Once it's rasterized, we can save another PDF. This time, we'll just call it Atari Both. Again, in RE3, we're going to start by deleting our first two files. Then we'll bring in the new one we just saved. And since it's both vector and raster, we'll make sure to leave both of them checked. Now right away you can see the outline is black instead of red. That's because since we left raster checked, it's going to try and rasterize everything in the image, vectors included. But since we made our outline red, we can change the threshold to make it so the red doesn't get picked up 
as something to engrave. We can bring this pretty low. 51 looks pretty good. We can't see any black around the outline, so I think we're good. That said, I have seen the laser try to engrave the outline even with a low threshold. So to be absolutely sure, we can go back into Illustrator and change our outline to something lighter, like yellow or cyan. Another thing we can do is change the outline to white. Now I've had different levels of success in different softwares with this method, but coming from Illustrator, this works great. So we'll just save over our Atari Both file and re-import it. Since the outline is white, it won't get picked up by the rasterization process, and since RE3 doesn't allow white vector lines, for visibility reasons, it converts it to a light blue. So there you have it, three different ways to import the same project from Illustrator to RE3. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments and we will get to you. Uh, if you'd like to see another software, just let us know. I know Walker likes to use Inkscape. We have a couple of videos of him designing in Inkscape. Um, uh, I use primarily Illustrator, so that's why I did this one. So, But if there's other software that you'd like to see, just let us know. If we know it well enough, we can do a video for you. So, uh, With that said, until next time, keep making.